for more analysis of the situation. I'm joined by our international affairs commentator, Doug Herbert. Uh, Doug, just listening uh, to what other uh, allies of the United States are saying uh, at the moment, uh, quite a lot of different voices out there, uh, notably Israel extremely supportive of right. Washington's action. But here in Europe, uh, a rather sort of different set of opinions. Is everyone on the same page? Well, on precisely the same page, no, but on a, a general same wavelength, yes. Uh, a lot of the European allies, the NATO allies, and even a lot of allies across the Persian Gulf, at least countries that uh, believe the U.S. is their allies, such as Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, um, they're looking at the developments in, in, in the region right now with not just alarm, but a bit of horror. Um, although, depending on, uh, you know, who right now is the leader of a particular country, they're saying so uh, either more or less explicitly, that is, publicly. So, so on the European side, we've had uh, expressions of, of a real concern and phone calls back and forth with Iraqi leaders uh, here in France, Emmanuel Macron doing so, uh, in Britain as well, uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel of Germany. All of them, when I say on the same wavelength, the, the common thread in all of the European allies' reaction uh, is that this is a dangerous move and that they have been absolutely uh, begging pleading for some sort of de-escalation. And despite everything, even though at this moment in time, the last thing that, that seems like a, it's remotely possible on the horizon would be salvaging the 2015 nuclear, uh, Iran nuclear accord from which Donald Trump uh, uh, withdrew, uh, even though that seems impossible, there's still at least a voice out there saying, let's at least still try to do something to get that back on track. That despite the fact that we've, uh, Iran today is saying that they're expected to finalize a new retreat. They've been in the process process of backing away from that accord slowly as it's collapsing. Uh, a new retreat from that deal seems to be Im imminent in Iran. But we have common thread of expressions of alarm, ranging from alarm to concern. The UK is an interesting case because there, Boris Johnson, the, the, the UK actually has troops um, in, in, uh, in, in Iraq, along with the United States. It was never reportedly informed about any of these strikes. But it's also a very sort of radical right government right now, a, you know, a radical Brexit government under Boris Johnson. Johnson, they are disinclined to say anything openly uh, insulting of Donald Trump or openly antagonistic towards him. But even Dominic Robb, the foreign minister in the, UK, uh, in the UK, while he said, of course, the US is justified in what it did. It has every right to defend itself. We understand. We understand. Despite that placating, appeasing tone, he also in the next breath says, however, we would like to see de-escalation and stabilization. So even the countries whose governments right now are sort of hardwired to Donald Trump and almost doing his bidding in many respects are seen that way. Even they are expressing more or less the same types of concern and, and alarm. And we have, obviously, uh, Zarif, the foreign minister of Iran, who's going to be coming to Brussels. Uh, he's been sort of summoned there, but there's going to be a meeting with the, uh, the EU foreign policy chief uh, in the next couple of days. OK, and uh, all the while we have been hearing from uh, President Donald Trump the last couple of days justifying why he thinks that strike on Soleimani was necessary. Right. And then yesterday sending off a tweet saying, Iran, just do you even think about retaliating, right. by the way, and we will target 52 sites across your country. That's one for every hostage in the 1979 hostage crisis at the U.S. Embassy in Tehran. All the while, Iran doesn't sound in the least bit phased by any of that. Not phased. The, the anger, you see it in these crowds, the determination, not just similar, simmering, it is boiling up. Sure, there are some people who would probably like an immediate retaliation in Iran. Uh, it doesn't really operate that way. Iran has uh, its, its precedent, its track record has been to operate through proxies across the region. It knows that uh, it cannot match the U.S. military might, but it is a master of what we call asymmetrical warfare. And when I say the use of proxies, I mean what we have seen, the pro-Iranian Shiite militia in Iraq, uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon, which could target both American interests in Lebanon, but also Israeli targets nearby, the Houthis in Yemen, the opposition Houthis in Yemen. Uh, but the types of retaliation we could see, um, it's clear clear that it is going to be fierce. Uh, Iran is, there are reports that Iran is, you know, saying it's going to be more military. There's no public statement uh, to this extent so far. We've been talking about a lot of cyber attacks. You could expect it to be long. You could expect it to be on Iranian terms. The timing, the Iran will take its time. And it might not be a single thing. It could be several actions on many different fronts, which could extend to things like also targeting oil installations um, in, the, in the Persian Gulf region, which we've seen pass back in the summer, which was also a trigger behind all of these events. 
uh, you could say. You could see them uh, also trying to stage, once again, through their proxies, uh, different attacks on U.S. Um, uh, personnel, military, diplomats in these various regions, and by extension also Israel, which is seen as hardwired, if not sort of a double-headed hydra, Trump and Benjamin Netanyahu. They're all one in, a, in, in Iran's view. So don't expect them to lash out. Don't expect anything, uh, you know, uh, uh, on, on a fiercely military uh, scale. But you can expect the use of proxies. You could expect, I won't use the word pinprick, but you could expect the use of very well orchestrated, well thought out, on their own timing and on their terms types of attacks on American interests across the region through the use of various leverage and various proxies that they have, whether we're talking Syria, whether we're talking Lebanon, whether we're talking Iraq, or even beyond. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for that analysis. Our international affairs commentator, Doug Herbert. Thank you.